Each week, American History TV's American Artifacts visits museums and historic places. Next, we travel to Somerset County, Pennsylvania to visit the Flight 93 National Memorial and take a tour of the Visitor Center, which details the events of September 11, 2001. The memorial is the final resting place of 40 passengers and crew whose decisive actions prevented four Al-Qaeda hijackers from crashing a United Airlines 757 into the likely target, the U.S. Capitol building. Hi, I'm Adam Schaefer, and I'm a park ranger at Flight 93 National Memorial. Today we're going to be taking a look inside the Flight 93 Visitor Center, which was dedicated in September of 2015. We're currently standing out at the end of the flight path overlook. Um, so we're standing on, on the shadow of the flight path that Flight 93 would have been on just before impact uh, in the ground behind me. And the reason we're standing here is because um, this orientation for visitors is central to the design of the visitor center itself. The walls of the visitor center shield the visitor's view of the landscape around us here um, and the enormity of the landscape and only frame the flight path as you approach the visitor center entrance. And so as you're coming off the parking lot, you have to walk the flight path that this plane was on just before it crashed. And the tall walls help to frame the last piece of sky that Flight 93 passes through before impact here. The Memorial Plaza itself and the wall that bear the names of the passengers and crew is in white marble. Um, and so we're looking down over top of that wall from the flight path it's a continuation of the flight path just before the impact site and the crash site that we protect here. So let's take a uh, walk inside. We'll take a look at uh, the exhibit space that just opened in September of 2015. Thank you. Flight 93 is going to impact at 563 miles per hour, inverted, upside down. And this case is really meant to give you the sense of fragmentation that takes place when Flight 93 crashes. And so if we get a little bit closer, you can take a look at some of the pieces that are recovered here. These are average size pieces that were found all across the site from the point of impact and southward. The pieces are so fragmented and small here, but the majority of the aircraft is, has been absorbed into the ground here. And so uh, it's not until later when they begin excavating the crater and looking for evidence here that they're going to start to uncover more and more of Flight 93. That's represented maybe best um, visually um, on the camera by this bronze mock-up. Um, this sort of represents the edge of where mining had ceased. And so this is really at the southern edge of a very large open surface mine um, that had been active up until the mid-90s. And Flight 93 is going to crash just, um, just before the edge of the tree line here. So it's actually crashing in an area that would have been, um, the soil would have been removed for a period of time till the coal had been removed, and then this would have been backfilled. Much softer that morning um, than had it crashed uh, in an in a hard field um, where the soil hadn't been removed. Around 11.30 that morning, Corporal Jeff Braid from the Pennsylvania State Police, he's with the Aviation Division, is going to be um, airborne as they arrive here. And they're going to capture uh, some aerial footage of the site. Initially, they don't know what they're looking at um, as far as where the plane impacts. Um, they are going to land their helicopter. Um, they're going to be briefed and then they're going to uh, return uh, that afternoon. This footage um, really uh, can clearly show you where um, this hole 757 um, impacts the ground. And this is the vertical tail stabilizer that you see up above, and then the uh, fuselage where it would have impacted. Of course, it was inverted, so it would have been um, impacting the ground this way. It shows the scorching um, of the trees that are represented by the black walls of the visitor center. There's so much debris that is embedded in these hemlock trees because it's on the trajectory of the flight path that whenever the decisions made to uh, cut down the burned trees um, that they send those trees through a wood chipper and the wood chip pile remains here on the site. Um, it never left. 
um, and it was part of the effort to ensure that um, there was proper care taken for the remains and that no remains would leave the site unless if they were going for identification and return to family members.